Biology of Waterborne Pathogens. This presentation is part of the education program to promote water conservation, co-sponsored by the Water Education Alliance of Horticulture, a collaborative program hosted by the University of Florida with industry partners, OFA, an association of horticulture professionals, the Society of American Florists, the Horticulture Research Institute, and the Florida Nursery Growers and Landscape Association. For more information, go to watereducationalliance.org. Hi, this is Robert Wick from the Department of Plant, Soil, and Insect Sciences from the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. I'm going to talk to you today about the biology of waterborne pathogens. We're going to start with some of the issues, and then we'll talk about the pathogens, the biology of them, how they spread through the system, how they get to the system as well, and how they survive. We'll end with a few recommendations. Okay, so the issues. Well, clearly recirculating water systems are becoming more common. And this is a good thing because it conserves water as well as agricultural chemicals. Foliar diseases are reduced, and this is because we're avoiding wetting the foliage, and it's at leaf wetness duration and, um, and also wetness on the stem that allows pathogens like botrytis and bacterial diseases to become established, and many other fungal diseases of the foliage. But on the other hand, root diseases are potentially increased, and especially the spread of root diseases from one plant to another. And the other problem is, is it's difficult to keep the pathogens out of the system. And a big point is it's very difficult to decontaminate a system. So once we've got contamination in our system, we have to work pretty hard to get rid of everything. Hong and Mormon wrote a very nice review article in Reviews and Plant Sciences regarding the pathogens that have been reported in irrigation water. 17 species of Phytophthora, 26 species of Pythium, 27 genera of true fungi, bacteria, 8 species, viruses, 10, and nematodes, 13 species. That seems like a lot, and it is. And we should also consider the fact that many other species and genera occur in recirculating water, but just haven't been reported. On the other hand, the pathogens most likely encountered are pretty short. The list is pretty short. The most common one is going to be Pythium, various species of Pythium. Less common is Phytophthora and Fusarium. And potentially a problem, and these I haven't seen, but I suspect they've been reported, Xanthomonas, Ralstonia, Phalaviopsis, and Foliar Nematodes. So we're going to talk about Pythium and Phytophthora mostly because they're the most common and uh, perhaps the most destructive ones that we have seen in recirculating water systems. And this is a seed geranium that has been killed by Pythium root and crown rot. Here's some Osbiosperma that has been killed by Phytophthora dreschleri in a recirculating water system. And uh, another example of some, uh, I think these are Calibrachoa. On the right-hand side, we have diseased roots. And on the left-hand side, we have healthy roots. I'm sure we all can identify healthy versus diseased roots by now. And it's a good idea to be scouting your plants now and then, pulling roots out and to see what kind of condition they're in, make sure we don't have a problem creeping up on us. <clears throat> 